Hi there, Michelle here from Shell McQuay TV. We're helping you find ways to move from functioning to flourishing by putting the latest science to the real world test. Today, I'm very pleased to be able to introduce you to a dear colleague, Lisa Sansom. Lisa is the owner of LVS Consulting, a boutique consulting firm that helps to build positive organisations. As the Chief Positive Interventionist, Lisa shares positive psychology tools and techniques with her clients through speaking, corporate training and coaching across Canada. She's an active board member of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association and her upcoming book is titled Catch Them Doing Things Right. Welcome Lisa. Thank you so much Michelle, it's lovely. I'm so pleased you're here because one of the things I know that fascinates you and I'm always interested in learning more about is how do you help people be more engaged at work? And in particular, maybe you can start by helping us understand why is engagement important for us as individual employees, but also why does it matter to our organisations? That's a great question and it's a lovely distinction that you make there, Michelle. So let me start off from an organizational point of view because that's where a lot of the research is. Organizations that have higher employee engagement have a lot of great things going for them. They have better retention, they're more able to attract great new employees, they're more productive, their employees take fewer sick days and fewer stress days and in the words of one consulting firm which is Hewitt Associates, employees are more likely to say stay and strive. So they will say good things about their organization, they're more likely to stay and they're more likely to strive which is put in discretionary effort to get things done and they get things done well. So we know that there's a great business case for engaged employees but as you've pointed out there's also the individual component and individuals who are engaged in their job they have more fun and I know that sounds very self-serving but really when I think about the fact that we spend a about half of our waking hours at work, shouldn't that be a good time? And we often go through life saying TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday, and we live for the weekend. And really, what if we bounced out of bed on Monday and said TGIM, and wouldn't that be wonderful? And so engaged individuals at work, they have more fun, they feel more connected to their place of employment, they're more likely to have good social relationships, which we know is good for our well-being and they contribute to that positive atmosphere at work and so they take pride in it as well. So it really does contribute to their all-around well-being as, as a human and not just as somebody who works. It has positive overflow into the rest of your life as well. So given those benefits and that employee engagement has been a priority for lots of organisations now for quite a while, why aren't we seeing dramatic shifts in the amount of engagement that we see in organisations? I think year after year, particularly in surveys like Gallup's World Poll, we see engagement almost getting worse rather than getting better. So what's going on? Yeah, I wish I knew. Honestly, I wish I had that magic wand and just say, poof, you know, everybody's magically engaged at work. Um, we know that there's work done around whether you have a job, a career, or a calling. And a job is just give me the paycheck, I'm here for the paycheck, and that's it. And a career is there's a little bit more investment. I care about moving up, for example. Um, but money or status or something like that would still be a primary driver. Whereas the calling is I would do this anyways. This is what I was put on this earth to do. I see the bigger meaning and purpose of the work that I am doing. It is part of my life. It is part of my identity. It is part of my soul. That's a very engaged employee. And my guess is that we just have a lot of people who are almost settling for a job or maybe a career and they're not really invested in what that could mean for them. I think that there's also... Um, some kind of harm done in the way that we talk about work and there's this whole phrase of work-life balance which I've come to really despise because it implies that work is bad and life is good and we need to balance the two of them and there's a static balance and there's a perfect optimal amount and it's just not true I would love to see us talk more about work being a place of meaning and work being a place of fulfillment and this work-life integration because sometimes work is really really good and we need to make 
make it acceptable to talk about the good parts of work. Just like sometimes life is really, really bad and we know where we can go for our social support in that. But we seem to have this myth that we've created over the years that work is all bad and you're supposed to hate your boss and you're supposed to hate your commute and you're supposed to hate going to work. And I'd love to see us change that because I'm not sure that that's really helping with engaged employees. I think that's so true. What do you think, though, as leaders we're able to do to help create more of that sense of calling for employees? I know one of the things I've heard you talk about in the past is sort of the five skills that leaders need to be more positive and engaging of their staff members. So what can leaders do to help their people find this sense of calling in their work? Yeah, it's it's hard to narrow it down to just five, but here are some of the top ones that I really encourage leaders to do. Um, number one is leaders themselves need to be engaged because we know from a lot of research that leadership engagement tends to limit employee engagement. So if you do an employee engagement survey and you find that your leaders are at, let's say, a 78% engagement, it's highly unlikely that your employees are going to be able to get beyond 78% engagement. So leaders need to engage themselves and they need to find ways to do that and then communicate that on to their employees. And that's the second thing that leaders need to do is they need to communicate. They need to talk to their employees. They need to create teams. They need to share information. They need to be open and honest. They need to trust their employees. And a lot of what we enter into when we work is what I might call a social contract. So there is the actual job contract, which is I do the work, you give me money, and I sign for that, and I get my benefits, and I get my pension, and you will provide me with safety, and you will provide me with things to do and the tools to do it, and that, that's our explicit job contract. But there's also an implicit its social contract, which is, and you're going to provide me with nice people to work with, and you're going to be a good leader to me. And I think that leaders need to recognize that that's there so that they can provide that as well, because we know that those relationships are tremendously important to employee engagement. And the other thing I would say is leaders need to trust. They need to know the strengths of their employees. They need to work with the strengths of their employees. They need to let employees take the initiative so that employees can run with their strengths and do really good work. Michelle, I firmly believe that people get up in the morning saying, I want to make today a good day. They don't get up in the morning and say, how can I really annoy somebody? How can I make today a horrible day for everyone around me? Oh, people want to have a good day. And so leaders need to be able to cultivate the conditions to allow that to happen. And when employees want to take the initiative, be open to that and let them run with it. And some leaders are a little nervous to do that because they feel like that's letting go of control and, oh, I'm the leader. I'm supposed to know everything and do everything. So I think that openness um, to really let employees run with it, to know their strengths, to communicate, to trust, to team build, all of that's tremendously important to engaging employees. And so are there some quick wins that you often suggest leaders do to make that? I mean, you know, some of that is almost attitude and ways of being that can take quite a while for a leader to really feel comfortable in. So what are some of the quick wins that you work with leaders to do to get them started on that journey? I love sharing with leaders some of the cheap free and easy things you can do to engage your employees. So number one is smile. <laughs> just just walk around and smile. Um, there's actually an organization where they instituted a rule that if you were within 15 feet of someone else, you had to smile. And if you were within five feet, you had to say good morning. And it actually changed employee engagement, just those little tweaks. So smile, look people in the eye, say good morning, ask how are you and mean it. We're not talking about big fancy things here. It's also really important for leaders to recognize their employees. Say thank you. The organizations that I go into and work with, employees are craving it. They would love to hear their manager say, thank you. I appreciate it. You did a good job. That is tremendously engaging and empowering. I also like to talk a little bit about how we can use meetings because everybody's day is back-to-back meetings and people say, I can't get any work done because I'm in meetings all the time. So if there are some ways to minimize the meetings, of course, that's great, but you do have to sometimes meet. So start off your meeting with what went well. 
It doesn't take any time. It doesn't cost anything. And people will share good stories, and that raises morale and engagement. And then people feel proud of their association with this organization as well. So there are some really quick, easy, behavioral, concrete things that leaders can do. It's going to be good for them. It's good for their employees. It's good for morale and engagement. I love that you don't need a budget for those. You don't need anyone's permission. You just have to choose to turn up and start. (laughs) One of the leaders I worked with, um, what she did is she took five little coins and she'd put them in her one pocket at the beginning of the day. And so her challenge to herself was to recognize five different people doing things well. And every time she did, she would move a coin from one pocket over to the other pocket. And that's all she did. That was just her challenge for herself in her leadership growth and development. And she noticed it really had a big impact on people around her. And when she would get to the end of the day, she had that sense of pride. She had touched five different people in a meaningful way and all those coins were in the other pocket. So there's a real sense of accomplishment for her as well. It was just such a quick easy little trick and like you said Michelle no permission needed nothing needed except for five little coins or buttons or tokens or whatever you have go out and change the world it's such a great example so Lisa what if though our boss isn't quite there yet what can we do to improve our own level of engagement so we are having a bit more of that sense of fun and looking forward to going to work even if the rest of our organization isn't quite ready for that That is a wonderful question because when I tell people I do leadership development, almost always the answer I get is, oh, you should talk to my leader. (laughs) And it's true. I mean, there are some leaders out there who sadly do make life a little more difficult than they should. The first thing I would say to employees is try to put yourself in your leader's shoes. They may be suffering from great stress, from great pressure, things that you don't even know about. So be kind, understanding, compassionate give your leader a little bit of slack. Yes, we hold them to a higher standard. They are people too. But if you're really having a hard time and your leader is absent or your leader just comes out of the woodwork when things are going wrong, there are still things that you can do for yourself. And I would say it's that a heliotropic effect, as Barbara Fredrickson puts it, we all turn towards the light. So you need to find your sources of light. Where are the people shining? Where are things going well? Where can you go to fuel yourself so that you've got that solid foundation for when things are very difficult? One woman I'm working with was brand new in an organization and she was having a little bit of a hard time just adjusting to the new social climate because the place she had come from was very friendly and bubbly and gregarious and the place that she moved to was a little more formal and stuffy and she knew she would eventually make friends at work but just those initial weeks were really hard and so one day she had taken her lunch into her office and was thinking well where am I going to go to eat my lunch because they didn't really have a culture of eating lunch together and she heard this riotous laughing from down the hall. You're like, oh, okay. So off she goes with her little lunch bag and she found all the admin assistants were sitting and eating lunch together. Now she wasn't an admin assistant herself, so she was a little cautious about going in, but she kind of knocked on the door and she said, you ladies sound like you're having such a great time. Can I come join you? And of course they welcomed her in. And, you know, I'm sure it changed the conversation when she was going in there, let's be real. Um, But it was more fun than sitting by herself. And so she She went to where the light was. She went to where the fun was and started to develop some relationships there. And it was probably quite strategic, even though she didn't realize it, because let's admit it, the admin assistants run the office. So it gave her a great social circle as well as great professional connections and did very much ease her transition in there. So we need to find those little life-giving forces, those areas that are working well. And it's just that mindset, right? It's just instead of saying, this is all broken, this is all horrible, everything's miserable everywhere, there are things going well. And even if the things going well is that the heating system is working that day and the lights are on, let's stop and appreciate that and savor that and share that with someone else. I do believe, Michelle, that organizations can set the conditions for engagement, but we as individual employees We need to walk through that door and make it happen. So there are certainly some choices that we can make. 
I think there's such great practical tips. And as you were talking about that, it was reminding me about that sort of hunting for the good things at work rather than just seeing all the bad. And I was wondering even with your example before of the five coins in the pocket, you could probably do the same thing about trying to find five good things each day, even if you're not enjoying work hugely, but just to, again, trick your brain into that uh, process of looking for the things that are working rather than just paying attention to the bad. Do you think that would work? (laughs) I think that would work. I mean, give it a try. When I'm coaching my clients, I always say, it's a grand experiment, right? Try it. It's probably not going to hurt. It might even help. Try it for a week and see how it goes. Come back. We'll talk about it next time. And most often, people say, you know, it felt really fake at the beginning. This felt really wrong and really fuzzy. And I felt like I was trying to trick myself. But by the end of a week or two weeks, they're really into it and they notice a difference. And they have noticed that they can make a difference for other people around them as well. So give it a try. Why not? I love that ripple effect that it can have. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. I think there's such practical, simple things that people can start to apply. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. It's been lovely talking with you. And if you're looking for more ways that you can boost employee engagement, be sure to check out Lisa's blog at lvsconsulting.com and keep your eyes out for her new book, Catch Them Doing Things Right, coming out soon. In the meantime, if you're looking for more tested, practical and playful ways to move from functioning to flourishing at work, be sure to stop by michellemcquade.com, leave your name and email address so you can hear all our news first. Remember, you are good enough. So don't be afraid to let your light shine. Until next time, take care.